I dress up as a baby. I have a big thing for onesies. I have probably about like somewhere in between 90 and 100 in my closet. You have 90 onesies? I have like three of these gecko suits. Hello? Hello? Hi. Is this a geck? Yeah, who's this? Um, you can call me Snail. Snail. How are you, Snail? I'm great. How are you? I'm a gecko on the computer. Yeah, yeah, I can tell. Um, okay, so we're here today. Um, I wanted to talk to you about um, my life as an adult baby. I don't know. <laughs> Kind of a, by, a taboo subject, but... What do you mean by adult baby? So, in my free time, I, I dress up as a baby. I, I have a, a daddy, currently. I, and I, I specifically wanted to talk to you about... I went to a convention for adult babies... Interesting. So you dress. I have a bunch of questions for you. So you dress up as a baby. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, mm -hmm. wear, what is what is the attire exactly? It's a diaper. It's what is it? Everything. Yeah, diaper. You got onesies. You got, um, you know, cute looking shirts. You got, you know, you got the pacifier. You got the bottle. Everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, so um, and your daddy, who 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 is your daddy? What does he wear in the equation? Um, so he's about he lives a, like two hours away from me, so I don't get to see him all that often. But um, my school is close to him, so every time I go to school, I will um visit him, and um, we uh, you know, he'll just kind of take care of me, um, make me feel good. Um, I get a little little teased by him. Yeah, it's like part of our dynamic, you know. He um, he has a wife, and um, you know she doesn't seem to give a crap about the whole thing. You know, I think she thinks it's cute, and they're polyamorous anyway, so I don't think they really care. But yeah. So is this a sex thing? Um, you know what? In this current relationship, it is not. Because Interesting. in terms of like sex stuff, I'm I'm really only into women, you know. Okay, so but, you have this um, relationship with this daddy that is not sexual at all. Not sexual at all. I think he wishes it would be, but no, it isn't. Okay. Um. So I've I we I have a bunch of questions for you. I want to know this kind of off the bat. Mm-hmm. And this is what everyone, this is, and you know this because I'm sure you've received a fair amount of um, criticism to anyone that you've talked about this with in your life. Is that accurate? Oh, yeah, yeah. I had a, um, I had a group, like, it was like me and like three friends. We had been friends for like years and years. And I told a couple of them, the whole group like disowned me, stopped talking to me. So here's the main point of criticism in my eyes. I I personally am, am a big fan of anyone can go do anything that they want with their lives. You know, you want to go dress up as a mm -hmm. baby. Uh, it's it is what it is. You know, live your life, man. But I think the main point of contention is: Do you see a a red flag? in a guy who is sexually interested in you dressing up as a child. Yeah, so that's like a huge point of contention in this like community. I mean, and we do have a community, you know, there's all these girls on Instagram who okay. have tens of thousands of followers and stuff like that. And and it's it's a big talking point that like gets brought up a lot. Um and you hear these people talking about it on their accounts. And I guess, you know, the answer is, um, you know, as long as they're going for an adult and the adult is consenting, then it has nothing to do with children, even though we are acting out a childish role play, which I know, like, is a little, I don't know. It's, I mean, yeah, it's tough. 
it's Can it's I like ha- I would no. Go ahead. Go ahead. I have, go I'll, ahead. I'll, go I'll ahead. Ask my, I'll ask my questions later. I want to hear what you have to say. Um. Yeah. I. I. I just say that. Um. You know, for me personally, I love the feelings that come along with someone. Um. Like babying me, taking care of me, like making sure I'm all right all the time, kind of looking after me in a sort of way, making me feel sure. small, making me feel taken care of. But, you know, I do have this thought a lot of the time of like, like, like you brought up of, you know, is this guy looking for a child? And like, I don't think that's the case because, you know, what he's getting out of it isn't like preying on a child's innocence. It's more like, oh, my, you know, my partner looks really cute dressed up like this and um you know i'm humiliating her i'm making her feel belittled like that kind of thing it's less about the baby aspect and more about the role play if you get what i mean yeah i do get what you mean it's more about i mean it's like a power play type of like uh uh role play dynamic yeah exactly so has there ever been and I guess not even saying that this is saying something, but I, I don't know. I'm curious what the answer is. In in this community, um, have there been people who have been kind of outed as like, oh, this person actually is a pedophile? Oh, yeah, yeah. And I mean, um, I, I just recently, it, it's a big thing and it happens all the time, unfortunately, because, you know, uh, there's a lot of people who are are not pedophiles, of course, in this community. But um, what ends up leading pedophiles here is they're like, oh, well, I can't get my hands on a real child. I guess I'll do with like second best, you know, uh-huh. um, and this becomes their solution. And and, you know, eventually you kind of they get outed somehow, like someone finds child porn on their computer or something happens, you know, like. But I, I've heard I've heard definitely like a lot of stories of that happening in the past but you know relatively rare but happens a good amount still yeah and um in this community how often uh are is this subject talked about fairly fairly um often i would say I mean, you know, I was just talking like whenever I meet up with my friends who are kind of in in this community, like it, it comes up in our conversations. It's it's a big, I, like I was saying, a big point of contention in this community, and like you know, a lot of people end up talking about it on the big ABL Instagram accounts and all that sort of stuff. Um, what do you what do you th- and I, I I kind of see from how you've explained it what you get out of it in terms of the dynamic, you know, feeling like you're being taken care of, you know, um, what do you, what would you want people to know about this that you think maybe they are misinformed about? Okay. Okay. Number one, um, the the whole idea like when when people look at this community too often the perception is like these um you know kind of not very good looking like white guys who like to dress up like a baby and they look you know they look terrible you know you look at them in like these documentaries and videos and stuff like this and you look at them and I'm like, oh, my God, I feel bad for this guy. Like me as a person of this community, I look at him and I'm like, oh, God, I feel sad for him. You know, just because so many of them don't seem to know how to act like a normal human being, like outside of their their kink. But also they're just, you know, they're struggling with loneliness because they have this. Um, and I, I you know what I have to say is like there are so many people who are not that like stereotype of our community there are many, many like beautiful women in this community and like there's a ton of trans people in this community. It's just it's so much more diverse than the stuff that is put on the Internet about um, specifically our community. Somebody in the chat and I try not to read the chat. 
very often, but somebody in the chat wrote mm-hmm. that it's it's almost like wondering if furries are actually into having sex with animals, where it's like, right? They are most. I assume most of them aren't, but the ones that are. I mean, there's got to be a couple people in that community that do want to have sex with foxes and shit. Exactly. No, I think you're totally right on that point. Like it's. It's, but I mean, uh, is that like you to know, you? Uh, but the, but then to you, is that like? I mean, is that scary to you? Like, is that is how? I mean, how does that feel that you're part of a community that is, you know, you know, uh, that you don't have malicious intentions, and that the people that you do this with don't have malicious intentions? But is how does it feel for you knowing that you're so deeply entrenched in a community where something like that happens all the time? Um, you know, it, I mean, it doesn't happen all the time. Like I said, like it's a part of our community, but it's, it's relatively rare. And, you know, I take comfort in, in knowing that I surround myself with good people with good intentions. And like, I, I think that I'm, I'm very good at sussing that kind of stuff out and, you know, knowing whether someone's like kind of a weirdo or not. And, and I feel like you can tell with the, I don't know, people always want to make, pedophilia like this uh hidden thing that suddenly just gets discovered about a person but i don't know my personal opinion is like i feel like you can tell you know like there's there's something off and i feel like i have a good sense of that sort of thing so it doesn't really bother me as much um do you ever poop your pants and have somebody clean it for you i have never had that happen personally uh you know i'm not saying it wouldn't be an interesting experience. I don't know. I, I think it would be fun. Um, I've, I've never done that, but I, I definitely have feed myself and had someone change me. Yeah. Okay. Is it, is it a, to you, is it a big step? Um, is there a big step between peeing yourself and pooping yourself? Like is pooping yourself kind of a different level? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, uh, I mean, there's a lot of people in this community who are like, oh, I wear diapers, I pee them, and I, I do all that. But, you know, um, I would never poop myself. That's absolutely disgusting and filthy. And, like, I see where they're coming from. Um, and I understand Wait, why too, is Hold on. Know? Why um, is pooping why is pooping, why is pooping yourself that much more disgusting than peeing yourself? Uh, I don't know. I mean, in my mind, you know, urine is, urine is sterile. I mean, at least as long as it's in your body, as soon as it comes out, it's no longer sterile. But I find urine to be much less, um, I don't know. And, and like the, the thing about poop is it, 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 it sticks everywhere. It's absolutely disgusting. Like they, there's just, there's a difference. It's, you know, pee doesn't, pee doesn't smell like that. Pee doesn't like stick to everything and like make things nasty. You know what I mean? Like, Poop is just gross stuff, man. You know, I respect that you're willing to um, defend all of your statements at uh, throughout the show. <laughs> um, yeah, you kind of have to. Do I you mean, have a rattle? Do you, about do you, are there props and stuff? Do you, is there? Do you like shake a oh, little yeah. rattle and have a binky and shit? I have. I think I have two rattles. Um, I have. I have quite a collection of of binkies and or pacifiers. Yeah. Um, I, I'd say maybe like, like 20 or 30 of those. Um, I have a big thing for, for onesies. I have, I have probably about like somewhere in between 90 and a hundred in my closet. You have 90 onesies in your, I don't even have, I don't. I have like three of these gecko suits. You have ninety onesies in your closet. Yeah, somewhere. I mean, the last time I counted was like a year and a half ago, and I was at seventy-two. So I'm guessing it's somewhere around there now with what I've accrued over the last year and a half. How long have you been doing this for? Um. So I kind of yeah. My 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 story is basically. Um, I mean, as a community, the uh, ABDL community, 
adult baby diaper lover community is very, um, you know, they're they're extremely good about keeping minors out of the community to an extent where they can almost be like really mean and like really forceful about it. And so um, pretty much as soon as I turned 18 is when I started getting into all this stuff because, um, you know, I just there was so much pushback and I, I felt like bad about getting involved in things before I was actually an adult. But I mean, I lurked around on like forums and stuff and, you know, looked at pictures, but I never actively became a part of this community until I like turned 18. What is it that drew you to to the, to want to be doing this like as soon as you possibly could? Um, well, I I don't know quite where it came from, but I just uh it started for me as like a diaper kink, you know, when I turned um I say like when I was in in middle school, probably around like 13, 14 years old, I I started to get into this this kink and like that's where it started for me and then like the baby stuff came alongside of it 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 didn't start with the baby stuff it was more of like i like diapers i think they're hot interesting um okay i want to know about this convention because i'm imagining a exhibition floor where there is some fucking guy who like his whole like like there's like booths and there's like a rattle booth where there's like all these premium rattles that you can buy and like all these onesie exhibitors and like binky booths and like there's people who they make a living f- selling fucking binkies at adult baby conventions all across America is that accurate that's what i'm imagining you're you're i would say you're halfway accurate like there's um, I think the the convention I went to, there was probably about uh, five or six vendors there, and they're all like, they were all the the convention doesn't do as much of like the the independent sellers. They they do like the big ones. So we had um, all the big players in the the ABDL world, which is like AB Universe, Taika Bulls, Rears. Well, these uh, wait, big, so these are all, so there are like there are like. Big, you said you, you said the big players. There are big players. There are giant brands who specialize in creating baby products for adults. Yes, yeah, I say Rears is is pretty much the biggest one. They have a huge. You look at their website. They have a huge selection of different kind of diapers with different Dude, what designs. What is this website again? I'm gonna go. Them. I need to look at this. What is this called? Yeah, it's called, uh, it's R-E-A-R-Z dot C-A. Dude, holy shit. This is a real, this is a real thing. This is like, there's, they have, they're having a Black Friday sale right now. Playtime, they have bibs, bottles. Do you drink out of a bottle and shit? Sometimes, I mean, it's not. Have you ever like have you ever drank out cum out of a baby bottle? I have never drank cum out of a baby bottle. Okay, what do you do at this convention? Like, what are there panels? What what's going on here? Yeah, um, so there's they have what's called the playrooms, and the the playrooms are just like all these different little rooms that are geared towards a different facet of like this lifestyle. So you have like the toddler room, you have the baby room, you have the like middle room and middles are uh, for an explanation. They're like, they're, they're like, um, like adult babies, but they like acting out more of like a teenage role. If that makes sense. Uh, Um, Like a, like a bratty teen thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then there's like there's there's a room for the furries, of course. There's there is a large furry presence in this community. So that you have they're called the diaper furs <laughs> or the baby furs or whatever. And they have their own dedicated space. Um, there's obviously like a dark room where if you wanna do like BDSM stuff, you can go and do that there. 
Um, and they have like, you know, people kind of walking around the room, making sure everyone's being safe. Uh, there's a lot of drugs and partying at these conventions, even like the convention, like owners, the people who run it, they are, they are constantly on drugs during these conventions. It's crazy. Um, that, that tracks, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense to me. Um, what kind of drugs are these babies doing? Um, I say the most popular ones are like acid, um, a lot of weed. I uh, cannot imagine being on acid Molly. and walking around and seeing a bunch of adult babies <laughs> running around. That would be <laughs> that would be really intense. It's it is really intense. I mean, like I remember being on acid and just walking through these hallways and like. I think I, I had taken a little bit of shrooms too, so the hallway's like twisting around, and um, there's all these people just like walking around wearing diapers and like doing baby shit. Um, and then I think we kind of um, ended up cordoning ourselves off in this one room, and we stayed until in there until like 1 a.m. when they kicked us out. But we were playing in like this ball pit, which is disgusting. You never go in the ball pit at any convention, but especially a diaper convention. Um, that was a bad idea on our part. That's probably how we got COVID. <laughs> um, the uh, yeah, it was just it was a, it was definitely an experience. And um, when they ended up kicking us out of the room, it felt that much more awful being on acid and getting like basically kicked out of your like safe spot, you know. Well, what you see, what would be horrible is is is, is I think it's one thing to be. Um, in your diaper with your binky and your rattle on acid at the baby convention, but then getting kicked out, and now you're just on the street in a diaper with. A oh binky no 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 no! Not 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 kicked on, on the acid. street. That sounds but a lot kicked worse. Out of the, just kicked out of the 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 playrooms. You know, they were like, okay, you can't be in it here anymore. We're closing the playrooms. Like, they didn't kick us out of the convention. What does this playroom look like? Is there like a slide? Are there monkey bars? Is it like a? Is it actually like a playground? Um, the one we were in, I think they called it the toddler room, and it it just had it was like very simplistic. There were some like toys and shit scattered around, um, some little like barriers you could put up. They, these like foam blocks. Um, and then there was, there was a giant ball pit, uh, covered in like a, um, what do you call it? Like a, like a mesh curtain to kind of keep the balls from getting out of the pit. There was like a slide. You could go down like a little slide that kind of had all these rolling. I don't know if you've ever seen one of those slides, the play playground that has all the little rollers that you slide down. Um, it's pretty interesting, but. You know, all, all the rooms had different stuff. Some of them had, um, like, actual furniture. Um, there was one room that had a, uh, a giant, or three giant cribs in it. Um, yeah. <laughs> three giant cribs? Yeah. Can you, like, rent yeah, a I mean, crib and, it, and shit? And, like, you and your, you guys can, like, do crib stuff? Uh, you don't rent it. You just you you just use it. You know, like they, they let really, you use it, but you know you you. I really wonder. You know, how at every convention they have like the allied security people who are like just hired to work whatever's going on at the convention center that weekend. I really w wonder what their experience of all of this is. So the the security they had hired for the convention were actually all people who had like volunteered from the community to do the security. Um, I mean, they had some like more officially trained security members, but they weren't going to be like stepping out and doing anything unless they really had to. Um, but you know, the 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 draw for them is if they become a security member, then they get to go to the convention for free. And they basically, you know, they work like maybe half the day and then the other half they get to be part of the convention. Um, but the the hotel staff was actually really interesting because they were all um, this takes place at a hotel, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that, 
and uh-huh. you rent out they rent out the entire hotel for this convention but the hotel staff you know they were basically what the worst thing is they were told um you know if you're at all comfort uncomfortable with this you don't have to work and which you know isn't bad i think it's a good thing that they were given that choice but at the same time that meant like three quarters of the staff dipped out so we were all stuck there with like you know Wait, basically three, a skeleton was 75 75 percent of the staff dipped out Oh yeah, definitely. They like they they totally left. They did not want to be a part of this convention if they didn't have to be, even though I think they were getting paid extra to do it. Um, which is understandable, you know, like if you're not into this thing, you might not want to go to a convention with a bunch of adult babies running around, you know. Um but there was this one staff member who actually got like really into the whole thing. And at one point, we were all sitting in the convention hall. They were like, I think they were doing like the the talent show. We had like a talent show that was getting put on. And she came show. into the room with her with her hair in pigtails on a tricycle. This is one of the um, just this, the hotel staff came in ri- riding into the room on this tricycle with her hair in pigtails. And everyone in the room was like, holy shit, and started clapping for her. This is a, an interesting thing that you're you're a part. Of. What's your name again? Snail. Uh, snail. You can call me snail. snail. This is an interesting thing that you're a part of here. Um, hold on, I have to sneeze. <laughs> um, this is an interesting thing that you're a part of here. I um, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it because I think. Um, I I I I I guess when you explain to me the idea that it's more about a a power dynamic in the way that I, I I'm pretty sure a lot of BDSM and non traditional sex things are, it makes sense. But um, I don't know. I don't even know if I really have to give my opinion. But um, hmm. Is there any other aspect of this that you feel like we we didn't cover that you you wanted to talk about, Snail? I guess the one thing I wanted to say was, like, I just, you know, this was my first ever convention I had gone to. And, you know, if you can picture it, the kind of sheer awe I had when I was sitting in this room, when we were doing, like, the opening ceremony for it, we're all sitting on the floor. There's probably, there's there's literally like 1,500 people sitting in this convention hall and they're all dressed like babies. And then these, um, the, the kind of leaders of the convention who are dressed like camp counselors get up on the stage and start like leading everything. You know, it felt like I was in like a, like a lucid dream or something. It was, it was absolutely absurd. What's the most fucked up thing you've seen at this convention? Um, like, did you see anyone like eat shit out of a guy's diaper? No, no. So there's like a lot of rules to kind of keep that stuff. Like no one's allowed to be shitting themselves in the public areas. Like you, you have to do that in your own hotel room. If you're going to do it, um, you can't like, be doing that stuff and you can't be like walking around in like a disgusting diaper that you haven't taken off in like 12 hours or something you know they they have rules about it Mm -hmm. um i'd say the craziest thing i saw um we were on acid my my friend who doesn't speak english very well kept like saying she kept saying like fuck machine party she kept saying fuck machine party and i'm like what are you talking about fuck machine party um she took me up to this this room, someone's hotel room, and we just kind of sat on the floor and we were chatting. And in the background, um, this dominatrix is setting up this, you know, machine. It's a fuck machine, which is basically just like a thrusting dildo machine. And um, the she keeps she's uh, pounding someone's ass with it. And she keeps saying, you like that, you little slut? You like that, you little whore? And we're just sitting there on the floor, just like chatting, minding our own business. And this 
crazy shit is happening in the background, you know, and I, I didn't really think about it on the time because I was on acid. But like thinking back to it, that's like one of the craziest things I've ever been a part of. You weren't thinking about it because you were on acid. <laughs> if I were on acid and I was no, I that, was that would be all I was thinking about. <laughs> no, I was just. I was sitting there, we were chatting about stuff. I glanced over occasionally, but like, I think the conversation was more interesting. Well, Snell, um, thanks for sharing this stuff. I feel like um, you don't, it's the, I don't assume that you have many opportunities to talk about this uh, in your life. Not at all. It, do you intentionally keep it a secret? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, like, I, I'd say, you know, the only people who know about this are my friends who are part of the community or the one friend that I'm extremely close with. Um, do Are you, like, uh, like do, do you have a significant other at all? I don't. Do you, do you, do you, does your family know that you're into this? Uh, yeah, my mom's kind of, a she's, she's been in my house before and she's nuked around, unfortunately. Um, and I think her take on it is she just doesn't even want to talk about it to me, which is like understandable, but it is a little awkward that she knows about it. Hmm. Hmm. Does that make you like upset that she doesn't want to talk about it? Or do you totally understand why she oh. not want to talk about it? Oh, I totally understand. And and there's nothing I want less than to have a conversation about this shit with my mom. I think that makes a lot of sense to me. I don't think, I mean, what, 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 I, you know, it's I wouldn't want to talk to my mom about my regular vanilla sex life, let alone if it involved me uh, dressing up as a baby. Exactly. Uh, is there anything else that you want to say to the people, the computer snail? Um, you know, diapers are great, man. Give them a try. Uh, that's it. Thank you for calling and sharing, Snell. I appreciate it. And, um, good luck to you in all of your, your baby endeavors. Thank you, Lyle. All right. Good night. Good night. Yeah, I'm still, I'm, I'm looking at this fucking website. Uh... Dude, this is a this is a whole a rabbit hole of a thing that you could get into. I'm not here to give my opinion on, uh, you know, the validity of whatever people are doing. Um, it is interesting to think about. There, there's a whole convention of people. I wonder what the average person there is like. And I almost kind of wish I would have talked to. Snail a little bit more because it's like, is there a kind of person that goes to adult baby conventions or or when you get down to it and you're actually there, is it all kinds of folks? Is it people who look like, you know, you is it your coworkers? Is it your family? Is it um, your teacher? I don't know. Although, you could say the same thing about pedophiles. You could say the same thing about pedophiles. What does one look like? Like a, 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 a thin mustache and glasses. No, I guess they look like everyone. Anyway. Let's take another call. Hello? Hello? Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, is this Lyle? Yeah, who's this? Holy crap. Hi, um, I'm Allison. You sound really different on the phone than you do on your stream. What's going on, Allison? Hi. So um, this year, time last year, I actually spent Thanksgiving in a mental hospital. Oh, yeah. Did they, was it catered? Was there still, did they still like feed you turkey and mashed potatoes and all that stuff? Yeah, surprisingly, it was actually really fucking good. Because, like, mental hospital food is really, really, really bad. Um, but, like, I don't know. They, like, 
they went all out for Thanksgiving Day. They had like the parade on, so we just sat around and ate turkey and did crosswords. It was great. So you're saying the food is typically bad in the mental hospital, but on Thanksgiving it was pretty good. Yeah. Like, like shockingly good. Interesting. So you're saying that uh, Thanksgiving in a mental hospital could be even better than, you know, just Thanksgiving at my family's house. Uh, one thousand percent. I um, so it was the first time in my twenty six years of life that I did not go home for Thanksgiving. Um, and it was the best Thanksgiving I've ever had, ironically enough. Um, Interesting. So it kind of taught me like I don't have to go home for family holidays if I don't want to. Um, is that do do you? I mean, these past 26 years that you've been going, that you've been being home for for Thanksgiving, has that been against your will or have, you know, how how is your feeling of being home? What is your feeling about 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 going home? Um, yeah, so it's complicated. Um, it's yeah, it's kind of been against my will. So I grew up um on the West coast. Um, and I went, um, to another state for college. Um, and my parents basically would get me a plane ticket and say, you're coming home. Um, and tell me when I was coming home for Thanksgiving, um, just for any winter break that they wanted me there. Um, I wanted to do research and stay at the university in the summertime and they wouldn't let me. Um, they said, we're not going to help you with rent. Um, and I lived in an area that was very expensive for rent. Um, so I essentially had to keep going home. And then I went to grad school um, completely on the other coast um, in New York City. And um, they still wanted me home for those holidays, but it was a little bit easier to get away um, from going home. And then now that I work full time and have really, really terrible vacation time, I literally can't. Um, and, or, I mean, it's a lot harder too, but the mental hospital thing kind of solidified it for me last year. Um, and now this year I'm not going back to Oregon for Thanksgiving. Um, I stopped, we get together once a year and go to a lake. Um, and I'm not in the summertime and I'm not going, so um, ha- didn't go last year. Um, so, so listen, yeah. so, so you're talking about how, you know, you don't want to go because you want to, uh, you know, stay where you were and, and do your research and, and all that. But like, what is your relationship like with your family? Yeah. So my dad's abusive. Um, there's not really any way to sugarcoat that, I guess. Um, he's an alcoholic. Um, he's extremely, manipulative and emotionally abusive um and one of those circumstances where part of the reason i was in the mental health bottle is because i i have like really bad ptsd from growing up um anxiety depression borderline personality disorder um and yeah i just it's one of those weird dichotomies where no one ever told me that like hey you don't have to have a relationship with your father (laughs) what about your mother so um, I love her. I love her to pieces. Um, but she basically enabled everything um, that happened. And so um, we're close, but my therapist um, doesn't think that's for the best. And so hmm. it's kind of a complicated situation there. Um, what did your What did your therapist have to say about all of this? Um, she thinks it's great. She's been trying to get me to like avoid my family for years. Um, Mm. she's, I, I've, so I've been with my therapist for about three years now. Um, she's the one that finally got me the diagnoses that I needed. Um, cause I've been mentally ill for like a really long time. Um, very, very sick for a very long time. Um, and I haven't seen any progress in my life until my lowest point last year. when I finally started creating distance between myself and my family. Um, and so when's the last time as of today that you talked to your family? Um, actually yesterday, um, my uncle had a heart attack. Um, my dad's brother. Um, 
And um, it was one of those situations where I was like, okay, I need to be, I had that self-imposed, like, I need to be a good daughter um, and call. And so um, just kind of checked in on that. Um, Do you have siblings at all? I do. Yep. And what's your relationship like with the siblings? Um, Used to be really bad. Now we're really close. Um, My brother's actually getting married next month. Mm. Um, And so, um, yeah, he um, and his fiance, they've been together for about 11 years. Um, He got out um, and actually started improving his mental health when he moved away as well. Um, for my parents, um, and he okay. doesn't go home for big holidays either. Um, so he cut off the family like a little bit before you did, in in terms of his timeline. Yeah. Of life. And mm-hmm. now I, because it's interesting because you said now that uh, he's getting married and you're, gonna, I assume you're going to a wedding. And I was thinking, I was like, oh, I hope the parents aren't going to be at the wedding because that would be a uh, a conflict. But it sounds like that's not something you're going to have to worry about. No, though he hasn't like quite cut them out cut them out he just has a healthier distance okay um, so are they so gonna be at, the wedding? be at the wedding oh okay. yeah okay and so to that yeah. point what you just said cutting them off versus a healthy distance where are is mm-hmm. that sort of how you're looking at it like you're trying to keep a healthy distance but not necessarily cut them off that's kind of where i'm at yeah i think um i think i'm scared of the idea of cutting them off. Um, I did have a conversation with my mom about a month ago where I basically like laid everything out and I was like, look, like I don't want to be ungrateful. I don't want to be that daughter, but dad is abusive. You know it. I know it. Um, it's kind of a fact. And I finally got her to say like, okay, like I won't pressure you to come home anymore. Um, and I was really grateful for that, I guess. Um, so basically from then on out, like that conversation out, my mental health got a lot better. Um, my therapist was really happy um, and really proud of that conversation. Um, and I just, the only time that I've talked to him since then was just, um, say, Hey, I'm sorry. You know, our uncle had a heart attack. Um, you know, I hope he's doing better. Just drive safe when you go to see him. And so. Um, so has this overall been a, a difficult process to you? I mean, it kind of sounds like something that you've been working on doing for a while. Yeah, I didn't know why. I've always had that question, like, why am I like this? Like, why am I so depressed and sad? Um, and I didn't really piece it together until like really recently in my life it's like oh I have like severe familial trauma Um, (laughs) and like it's really is as simple as creating my own life Um, there's a portion of time where I thought okay well if anything happens to my mom I'm just gonna end my life because I don't want to live without her Um, which is obviously really unhealthy um and not like a productive thing for a, a you know someone to be kind of thinking and um i this time last year i was just like i kind of tried to end my life i just wasn't having a great time um i didn't want to live anymore and i put my foot down i didn't go i didn't have to go see my family i uh, my mom did come and stay with me for a little bit um because i was very 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 sick for a while um just to help me like get things done around the house but um i got friends i um adopted some pets i quit my job got a new job um and just started living the life that i've always wanted for myself and so um that's great to hear man um i was gonna ask you uh like before we go what your Mm -hmm. uh uh what does your sort of social circle look like now? Do you um, do you have a lot of you said you have a lot of friends? Are you able to kind of like you know do you have people in your life that uh, you know you can you can be with or you know 
Uh, yeah. uh, are you are you living a life um, that that is does not feel like it's void of of whatever was you know uh, uh, a family might provide? If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for asking. I it's the first time in my life that I actually have friends that like I think would be there for me. Um, so yeah, I've got. I, I found that um, I was really lonely for a while because I didn't know anyone in the state. And so I went on meetup.com and I found a couple of meetup groups. Yeah. Um, and found a t- amazing circle that way. I recommend it to yeah. anyone and everyone. Like, yeah. Meetup.com is your best friend. And so. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I yeah, love that. I, that's my, that's, I love hearing you say that uh, for a mm-hmm. lot of reasons. Uh, and I hope uh, this is not an ad for meetup.com, but it also uh, it's, an unofficial, <laughs> it's an unofficial one because I have a very strong belief that like, um, you know, there are so many uh, doomer takes about the Internet, which a lot of them are pretty mm-hmm. fucking valid. I'll say that. But it's here to stay. And there's a lot of pros to it, which is that uh, the world is more interconnected than ever before. And so if you're, uh, you know, brave enough and willing enough to take the initiative, as you did, to go on the Internet and go to one of these, you know, websites like meetup.com or uh, like even like Facebook groups and shit like that, like, you know, they're for, for anyone who is willing to take the jump of putting themselves out there uh the the tools exist to do that you know it's it's less about the the how and more about the gusto to actually go and do it and i'm glad that you that you had that gusto to you know go go find find a group and 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 show up to the place and say hi and and that and that everything worked out for you because that's a tough thing to do i assume you went up i assume you went to this meetup group alone to meet these people is that is that accurate yeah i did i and uh, facebook groups too um help my my biggest thing is um i have really bad social anxiety yeah. my trick before going to this is if you're the same way is on the way stop to get yourself a coffee practice talking to the barista and ordering your coffee and just remind mm-hmm. yourself that talking to people is just like ordering a coffee mm-hmm 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 well, uh, congratulations, Allison. I, I'm I'm really stoked to hear that, and um, yeah, yeah, I love I love the whole um, thing of of like going out of your way to to make new friends because it's a tough thing to do. I and you know I get a lot of calls about it, and it's something that I think about a lot um, in my own life too. Of like you know if I moved to a new place or did a new thing or whatever, like how would I go about trying to meet people? So. Um, kudos to you, Allison. Is there anything else that you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Yeah, thank you so much, Lyle. Um, I just want to wish everyone a um, happy holidays. Oh, and I want to say um, you had an interview a while back about this person that worked at Arby's and Chopped Chicken and Chopped Chicken Land. Oh, yeah, I remember um, Chopped Chicken I want to say that. I use that phrase with my therapist now all the time. <laughs> she knows yeah. what it means. Yeah, um, yeah, I just yeah. want to say that that um, thank you for what you do. Like that really positively affected me um, and gave me tools to talk about how I'm feeling. So um, I'm very thank stoked you for to everything. Hear that. Have blessed holidays. Hey, you too, man. You take care. All right. Thank you. You as well. Bye now. Uh, that was a great call. Um, yeah. The the uh uh. That was really cool. I liked that. I she she really had an arc to her that is inspiring. Um, I mean, I I I, I love I love any call that starts with, um, you know, I was in the hospital and I was depressed and um, you know things were pretty shitty and ends with you know now I have all these friends and um, I'm working out. And, on things in a positive way and um i just said now that i love calls where people talk about being in the hospital and maybe that came off wrong but you guys know what i'm trying to say here um yeah i i i said it a thousand times but i'll reiterate like she really took the initiative 
of like it can be so easy to sit at home and not want to put yourself out there because it's scary but she did it anyway and it, and it worked you know i wasn't when i mean she said she had a bunch of friends now i wasn't expecting it to like have been um um from such a place of like her taking her own initiative to do it like you know sometimes your your circle of friends just happens naturally if you're lucky and then other times you got to you know do the work to 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 go form it so shout out to her hey good what's up hey how you doing buddy uh I want to just preface and apologize in advance to the audience if they hear me like moaning and groaning. Um, actually going through an incredible amount of pain, uh, passing kidney stones right now. So that's that's kind of why I wanted to call just to distract myself and get my mind off the the pain as much as possible and rant a little bit about uh, America's uh, healthcare system here because it's uh, not been treating me the best. Um. So but the fact that you want to take your mind off the pain, does that mean I should not ask you about the kidney stones? No, no, please do. It's just like to do something other than just lay there shaking in pain is a, a huge plus. So the kidney, the kidney stone, that's when you're like peeing rocks out of your penis, right? So, yeah, what happens is you get some kind of buildup. It's usually like calcium or some other uh, material that your uh, kidneys like get, i believe they naturally produce them but you have like an overproduction and then so a lot of people this is like this is the third time i've dealt with this uh, and this time it's taking i've been passing them for three days now and um the first two instances they passed within a day so this is just like prolonged hell but um a lot of people think that the painful part is when it comes out at like your pee hole and that's literally the least painful part of kidney stones it's when it's actually exiting the kidney and the stone goes into something called a ureter and the ureter connects the kidney to the bladder and then i guess once it's in the bladder you're kind of like in the home stretch but um you do get like a lot of blood in your urine depending on depending on the size of the stone and but um yeah i waited like a whole day thinking i was just gonna pass it from home because like i said it ain't my first rodeo and the pain just kept intensifying, intensifying. I, I finally told my wife, I'm like, you know what, we, we got to go to the ER and um, got admitted. And luckily they were, you know, really quick to get me in a bed and start getting uh, pain meds um, pumped in me. But um, they did like a CT scan, uh, x-ray, blood work, EKG, all kinds of tests. And oh, sorry, it freaking hurts. Um, yeah, it sounds like you're not having a good uh, time, wait. Devin. Dude, <laughs> not at all, Lyle. Um, it's, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy, honestly. It's like um, really? I've talked to women. Who, oh, no, dude. It's, it's who's absolute, who's, your, who's your worst enemy, Devin? <laughs> um, luckily, I don't have many. I'm kind of keep to myself. Uh, so wait, know, so if you've never had like a to... worst enemy, how do you know that you wouldn't wish this upon them? <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Um, I say wait until I some. That. I say you wait until somebody <laughs> really fucking crosses you. I guess your worst enemy would be the kidney stones themselves. Would you wish? Yeah. That like the kidney. Would you wish kidney stones upon kidney stones? That's fair. Yeah. You know what? Those those guys can uh, get a taste of their own medicine for once. And maybe. Okay. So uh, you would wish it upon your worst enemy. I. I would, and yeah, you're so right. You're a that's liar, Devin. Analyzing it. <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm getting the stones. Maybe it's my karma. I don't know. It's um, true. It's true. Yeah. So this is God's uh, way of punishing you. It very well could be because I mean, I've done some questionable stuff in my life where I'm sure I've inflicted pain and hurt on other people and. Um, other than this, I've got a pretty cushy, nice life. Um, what do you, so tell me, so let's elaborate, hold, hold me on there real quick. Uh, what do you sure. feel like you might have done in your life? Um, it's like ex-girlfriends. I used to think, okay. I used to think I was like a little player. So, you know, and growing up on the, the MySpace and Instagram, you know, dropping the DMs, it makes it so easy to like be promiscuous. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm thinking, you know, 
possibly uh, those uh, occurrences of kind of being a dirtbag to the, the women I've dated in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be my karma. I mean, I've never uh, done anything drastic like, you know, physical harm on someone or stole from someone or it's mostly like lying and cheating, I would say. But I think that's a fair amount of dudes these days and women for that matter. Um, is it is it is again, it weird to me that I feel like internalizing this this is crazy is it weird to me Devin that it you internalizing this idea even if it's like not true like this idea that you mm. deserve it like doesn't that kind of make it better the idea that like all right I'm experiencing this pain but at least it's for a good reason you know what I'm saying like if you really did feel as though you did something like you fucking my spaced too many girls and now you have to pay the price for that and that's your kidney stones like because at least because if you did because it wouldn't it be it would be worse if you were innocent and this bad yeah. thing is happening to this poor innocent devin who never did anything bad ever but if you thought if you were like i'm a fucking asshole and i deserve stones in my penis it's almost like take yourself like leave your ego out of it and like just look at yourself objectively and you're like, man, I suck, and I deserve all this pain. Does that like, does that make it better? Maybe. Am I crazy? I mean, those are no, those are very valid points. Um, I do think, you know, I've been cheated on. It doesn't feel great, especially when you're like super into the person. Um, but let me tell you, man, just this amount of pain. There's like nothing I feel anyone could do short of like murder, murdering someone that they would actually like warrant how bad this feels because it's like the first time I've experienced it, I thought I was literally dying. Like I, I called the ambulance and was saying my goodbyes and stuff. Cause it's just like it, you feel like something horribly has just gone wrong within your own body. You have no idea what and it's just intensifying and intensifying. But, um, I don't know. Like, see Devin, I, what about, I, I mean, I think at this point we should just make like, even if you didn't do this, like let's make up, things that you did wrong like i don't know have you ever like pushed a child or something like that no. like i'm saying what well, but let's well let's say that you convince yourself that you did and now the right. kidney stones are a punishment for that like at least i was all i'm saying yeah. all i'm saying is that if you convince if you did convince yourself that you deserved the pain it would make it mm -hmm. better because then you'd be like, all right, well, at least this happened for a reason. You know what I'm saying? Right. No, I, I you know, I'm trying to put myself in that headspace. And if I'm like, you know, really sold on the idea that this is my payment for all the bad juju I put out in the world, then you know what? If this is the price I have to pay to like clear up right. those sins, do you want to call them that? Then yeah, sure. I mean, if sense. that's the. Like when I, I'm not like a hyper religious person. Um, I don't think like when I die, I'm going to be like shown a movie re reel of everything bad I've done in my life, that kind of thing. But if there is something after the, after this life and they're like, you know what? You endured kidney stones three times in your life to make up and pay your, pay, your, pay the price for everything mm. you've done so you can come back as like a million, like the next Elon Musk or something. I would. Sure. Happily, I like that idea. Pass, Maybe pass not Elon Musk, but... you know. <laughs> Devin, do you feel do you feel sufficiently distracted from your kidney stones? Dude, absolutely. I'm, I'm reading the comments right now. It's uh, pretty hilarious, and um, and someone said something about soda. Um, I'm guilty of that. Costco um, had like a case of the really good Coca Cola from Mexico in the glass bottle with the real cane sugar. And, um, you know, when you got a whole case of that, you're going to drink as much as oh, your heart fuck. desires. Is soda, is soda what causes kidney stones? For some people, it is a very big um, uh, trigger, um, as well as, like, fuck. yellow, something of another, red, something, like the food coloring dyes and, like, Mountain Dew, like, these, uh, these, that's it, yep. Yeah. For yeah. some people, now, those kids are like used to the, talk about how if the, you drink enough Mountain Dew, you can't come because meal five like gets rid of your sperm. Interesting, interestingly enough, one of the prescriptions the doctors um, wanted me to take, which I didn't take because I read the um, uh, potential side effects, 
it does create because what it does it's supposed to make you retain more water and have like heavier flow peas to get get more pressure in there to eject the kidney stone um, but some of the side effects were like um, erection lasting too long to where it's painful you have to go to the doctor or difficulty ejaculating or uh, m- prone to more infection and um, I'm so skeptical of uh, medication because um, I, well, I have been having I'm sorry go ahead well Devin um, listen before we go I want you to know something maybe, uh, maybe this makes you feel better sure you've your pain that you've shared with us this evening has done us all a service because now everyone listening to like think about this Devin everyone listening to this now mm-hmm. like whatever like let's say somebody was in their car and they're like in, like say someone's listening to this in their car right now and they're like in traffic and they're like so pissed off and upset with all the stuff that's going on with their lives they now right. feel better because at least they don't uh, have kidney stones you gave that to yeah them, Devin. <laughs> that makes you you're welcome world my eyes. Um, Thanks, man. That that means a lot coming from you. Um, is there is there anything yeah, else yeah, that you want to say I, to the people of the computer before we go? Just take care of yourself. Drink more water. Don't drink sodas or teas. Uh, everything in moderation. But um, yeah, take care of yourselves because you know you only get older with time, and your body starts to break down more and more, and um, has less opportunity to recover um, as it does in your youth. Um, and just enjoy that time you have where you don't have any thoughts of my health because, you know, you cross the line where health is, um, of utmost importance and it's something you actually have to, um, invest energy and money into. Like I've probably invested well over 1500 bucks and just going to ER visits and doctors just within this last month, um, unrelated to the kidney stones, but, um, yeah, enjoy your youth. At least now you have lots of time to, uh, you know, lay in bed and go on Instagram, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Thank you for yeah, calling, Devin. Hey, thanks, Lyle. It's always a pleasure, but I feel like I transition too seamlessly from taking things seriously to not taking things seriously. Um, that maybe people think that I'm being serious when I'm not, or they think I'm not being serious when I am. And I'll never tell. God, I feel great right now not having kidney stones. Thank you for calling, Devin.